How's it going, folks? And welcome back to Fjolnir. If you missed episode one, season one, here with Fjolnir, make sure to check out the playlist down in the description. Today, we are back with the second season recap for our stream save over on Twitch. Now, of course, we have the second YouTube channel. If you've not got the memo yet, work extra space. Over there, we have stream clips. We also have all the stream videos go up there. So if you ever want to watch all the action unfold in full, you can catch up over there. There's a lot of Football Manager content. If you like the sound of my voice, you'll be in heaven. Also, just before we get into this video, massive thank you for the support on the second channel. That channel hit 5,000 subscribers this weekend. That's mad. So just to recap season one, we got promoted from the Icelandic first division. Of course, we were predicted to finish third. We surpassed those expectations and managed to finish second, only behind Fram. Now, I didn't talk about it last time out, and a few people were unhappy that I didn't acknowledge it. We hate Fram. I don't like Fram. I have a rivalry with Fram that is kind of very one way, but really hit a boiling point at the end of last year when I was announced and told we're moving stadiums for the new season. Oh, we've had to rent a new stadium. I don't like that. Oh, it's got orange seats. I don't want to use someone else's ground. Whose ground is this? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's like the... Of all the teams whose stadiums it could be. I can't believe it. Fram are trolling us. I don't... Like, you couldn't make it up. We've moved in with Fram. So as you can tell from that clip, not overly happy about the fact that with our promotion, we're now ground sharing with our rivals. I know some people might be like... Why Fram? Why, why Fram with the rivalry? Why did you pick them? I mean, here's a clip to provide some context. I appreciate that the clip just makes it look like I've just picked them and decided I hate them on a whim. That is kind of how it happened, really. Do we have a rival club? Does our club even have a rival club? We have no rivals. No one hates us. I decided I hate Fram, I think. Look at their badge and look at their rubbish stadium with their little van and mobile home off to the side. So despite that little setback of moving into a stadium with our rivals, we had to get ready for the Icelandic Premier Division season, which is where we are now. And we had our pre-season that went amazingly. We managed to win the Icelandic League Cup. Now, this isn't a proper competition. It's not a competition which the, uh, you know, the clubs necessarily care about. It's basically the Nations League in terms of glorified friendlies for the Icelandic domestic game. But we won it. It's some silverware, or at least it would be except I spent hours looking for a picture of the trophy for a thumbnail on YouTube, and then I was informed there isn't actually a trophy for winning this, which I'll be honest, it took the shine off the win just a little bit. Now, going into this season, we had made some pretty big additions to the team. The most notable, I think, was Redon Planner, 18 years old, Norwegian centre mid, a mega, mega talent. We signed him for £850, which might not sound like a lot for us, when we're, well, in the depth that we're in at the moment, minus 300,000, that's, that's big bucks to be spending in the Icelandic league. And he was joined by a couple of other players like Ibrahim Asori here, who is a great ball winning midfielder, Hassan Oskan, who had recently been released and looked like, on the face of it, a really well-rounded centre mid, Man Fang, who was actually from the same club as Planner and really was just a punt for the future. We needed to sign players who were going to get homegrown status. And there was one more player who's perhaps the biggest of the bunch. That's right. We signed Mycon, the, the Mycon. He's 40 years old. He was playing over in Brazil and I signed him on a free transfer. Um, now, granted, he is getting on a little bit, but 76 caps for Brazil, a great career with years at Man City, Roma, Inter, Monaco. Surely this experience is going to fare us well, especially when I'm training him to play as a regista, which I know is mental, by the way, and you might look at it and go, that makes no sense, Jack. Why would you train a 40-year-old right-back who's never played defensive midfielder in his life to play regista? I'll show you why. His legs have vanished. He, he can't run anymore. And uh, he's amazing for this role. I mean, look at the mentals. Look at the technicals. I, going into this year, wasn't sure how this was going to work out, but we were going to live or die by that decision. So going into this season, we were predicted to finish 10th place. The bottom two teams go down. Realistically, the expectation for this season was simply to try and stay up. 
So you might be wondering, how did you do, Jack? Well, let me show you some clips from the season. You can, of course, as I've just said earlier, catch all the VODs on the main channel if you want to see this season and how it played out. And, uh, well, enjoy this. It was, it was a pretty mad year. Right, Fredrickson, our left back. Please, Fredrickson. Please, you donkey! I'm so sad. It's been saved! What's happening? Sorry. Sorry, I'm, ne I'm nearly... I need something here. The stress has got too much. I need vodka. Ugh. Right, that's better. That's better. I'm fine now. Okay, okay. Okay, now we're calm, chat. It's very classy out the bolt. Four house and do it for me, mate. Come on, my son. Look, it's Friday night, chat. It's Friday night. Please, Petterson. Oh, my God. I can't keep getting up and getting vodka after every pen. It's not sustainable. This is a long shootout. I'm glad we didn't commit to a shot of vodka before every penalty or I'll be on the floor by now. Come on, Yarmerson. It's on tw penalty number 12. It's 10-9. Oh, my word. Laxdahl, please miss. What's happening? What's happening? Right, keeper, make a save. They've scored again. <laughs> What's happening? What's up, Planner, please? Come on, my son. I can't keep getting excited every time we score. Shout out to our fans in the corner. They're loving it. This is just the semi-final. Imagine what the final's going to be like. Gunnison. He's missed. We're through. Come on. Let's go. I didn't think it was ever going to end. Oh, my word. Our goalkeeper got best performer. you love to see it. We're in the final. Just about. Bloody hell. Mental. Oh, it's another set piece in a wide area. My con planners there. Come on, my son. We don't miss every chance that comes our way. A red on planner gets another header. My con gets another assist, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of a weird run in this cup. Bit unorthodox the way we won the semi final after 14 penalties each. But it's done. My con will end his last ever season as a footballer, getting man of the match in a cup final. What a way to send off the Brazilian legend. Playing as a regista. In the Icelandic top division. Unbelievable. Fram could never. Come on! Let's go. We are bloody massive in the cups. Man of the match, 9.4. My goat. My goat. The fact we're even in this position is a miracle in itself. We are Leicester. Also, Fram play FH. Oh, chat, we need Fram to win. We're going to be cheering on Fram quite a lot in this next game. We hate Fram, but, I mean, if Fram win here, Fram could still win the league. Very unlikely. You know Doctor Strange where he goes and looks in all the alternative universes to find out what we need to do? Do you know the thing I'm talking about? See, I, I don't have kind of the, the mental capacity of Doctor Strange, but I have something that can, that can allow me to see the different realities. Okay. Okay. I can, I can see... I can see the reality. What do I need to do? Okay, okay, I'm getting something from the spirits. Okay. I know I know what the plan is. I've got to go get my biggest fan. This is this is how we're doing it. It's the Fram fan. I've been told that the fan has to be the one to hit the continue button. Bloody up. This was a this is a terrible idea. Right. Sorry, I'll move the mic out the way. I've done it. Come on, Fram, do it for me. I've been betrayed. I don't have a gift. I'm a fraud. I might be overthinking this, but I feel like we have to change something to find a breakthrough. We're dominating this game. I mean, Keflavik, hold on. Fortes. Come on, my son! Come on! The changes work instantly. Come on. If Vala score and FH get another, then we blow the title. And there is still time in their game. They've already had two goals in extra time. Fortes, 
Hi, my son. Come on. Come on, Fjolnir. We are the champions of Iceland in our second season. Oh, my word. What a way to do it. What a way to do it. Four house and a product of our academy. Played it onto Fortes and Hymerson, who's another product of our academy. He's been on loan in Serie A for a year and a half. Came back to us in the summer. We've just won the league. How have we done it? Unbelievable. I mean, Keflavik, fair play to Keflavik. They've stayed up with a draw there. If they'd lost that game, they could have gone down. Oh, my word. We're in the Champions League. Now, yeah, it's the first qualifying round. Who cares? What a crazy season this was. As you've seen, we managed to win the league on the final day of the season. And I can't quite believe that we managed to do it. It was a sensational team performance, a team predicted to finish towards the bottom. We had a little bit of quality during the year. Some of our punts of transfers really came off. I mean, Planner, I thought he was going to be the main man. He looked like the best of the younger players we brought in. Sensational this year. Six goals and 12 assists to his name. Um, elsewhere, uh, Haforsen chipped in with nine goals this season. Five of them in the league. Some really, really important goals from the man who, of course, last year was injured for 10 months. And actually, a man who deserves a lot of credit. A man who we signed halfway through the year. Carlos Fortes, 27 years old. The Cape Verdean. He was kind of a difference maker, I feel like, in the second half of the year. I know he only scored six goals in 12 games. He joined us in the summer as a free transfer, gave him a fairly large sum of money, really, considering the situation we found ourselves in, and he really did chip in with some absolutely massive goals for us. Now, over in the Icelandic Cup, we did also manage to win this, so we kind of did the domestic treble, which is a newly promoted team was mad. It was really cool to do it live. I felt so guilty about the final, because in the final, I are made it to play against us. Now, IR actually play in the third tier of Iceland. It was like a fairy tale story. They built themselves all the way to the very top, and then we absolutely demolished them in the final. I say we demolished them. It was actually only 3-1, but it was a good little team performance on the whole. Fortes getting an important goal. Planner getting two goals. In fact, no. Fortes got an assist. Planner got the goals in this one. A bit of a role reversal. And Mykon in this game got a 9.4. Now, unfortunately for us, Mykon is struggling a little bit. He is retiring in a month's time. He's 41, but he did get natural at defensive midfielder over the course of this year. And as a regista, he got a 7.41 rating for us. So you know what, Mykon? You might be ending things now, but you did bloody amazingly. Also, you might have seen all these red arrows and thought, surely you've left that on his decline over the whole season. No, this is his decline in the last month, folks. If we look at it over the last season... It's safe to say he's not quite the footballer he was when he joined us. Uh, he now has only free acceleration. Now, it is worth noting that with our miraculous league win next summer, yeah, it's about nine months away because of how the Icelandic seasons work, we are going to be entering the Champions League technically. I mean, it's all the qualifying rounds. We have to go through, I think, four or five rounds to make it to the group stage. Being realistic for a moment... That isn't going to happen this year. If we could make it to the Conference League group stage, I think that would be a really good thing to aim for. I think it's semi-realistic as well because the previous champions, Valor, who really struggled this year, actually managed that this season. In fact, you could argue that their run in Europe is kind of what has led to their decline towards the end of the year. Just the amount of fixtures they ended up having to play through all the different qualifiers really, really added up. And I think should probably stand as a warning for us as to kind of what we can expect next season. It's going to be really, really difficult to match what we've done this year anyway, because I feel like we fluked it. But with all these extra games, that is going to add another layer of difficulty. Interesting to note, actually, despite our amazing season, we actually still have no players in the Media Dream 11. Whilst we're a, a team full of good players, we don't actually have super standout players, players who are way better than other you know, teams in the division's squads. Um, one player was a big Big kind of revelation this year actually was Felix Orn Friedrichsen. We signed him, as you can see here, for £11,000. Again, a pretty big sum of money really for us to pick him up from IBV. Has international caps for Iceland. He got nine assists from left back this year. And with our kind of narrow defensive system that we re reverted to for this year, he was really, really important. Out on the other side, Jonsson was super important, although his contract running up, whether or not he'll still be here next year, kind of remains to be seen. As you can see, up top this year, the not quite the worst Johnson, formerly known as the worst Johnson, 
um, was the regular striker for us. Of course, our player of the year last year, the second best Johnson, our other striking option, he was probably the big standout player last year. He just didn't make the step up, which was a bit sad, really. I wanted this man to do well, but three goals in 14 in the league, and he's kind of just been found out at this level, and he's perhaps one of those players I will have to move on going into next season. So speaking of next season, of course, we are going to be playing in the Champions League qualifiers over on Twitch, something for you guys to look forward to. I'm hoping that's going to help with the financial situation, where despite our finances, because of the European qualification, we have been given a little bit of money to spend, so there is some room to improve the squad. Of course, one thing I've talked about a little bit last kind of season review is the homegrown at squad kind of situation, because in Iceland, you have a squad of 25 players in the league. Eight of those players have to be homegrown at club. And so whilst it'd be very easy just to go, right, we have all this money, let's replace everyone. We can't just do that. Eight players have to have come through our academy at any one time. And whilst a few of the young Norwegians like Planner, like Mang Fang, have come through uh, this year and developed well and will eventually get homegrown status, that isn't going to be for a few years' time. So we've got to be sensible with how we spend our money and especially how we manage the squad, planning for the future. I think a big focus of the recruitment going into next season absolutely has to be getting in some players who are 18 and younger who will get homegrown squad uh, or homegrown in squad status, you know, in the next few years. Now, just looking at our league run this year, it wasn't like we were top of the league for ages. We really peaked in the second half of the year. In fact, we had our best form when it really, really mattered and we climbed our way up. Being realistic, I can't expect us to win the league next year. I doubt the media are going to expect us to win the league next year. Um, it's going to be a tough little task for us, but we scored a lot of goals. We defended questionably. I feel like that is going to be our mantra, really. We're just going to have to try and score more goals than the opposition and hope that is sustainable in some way. So anyway, that is a little overview of Season 2 here at Fjolnir. As I already said, we stream this save game over on Twitch on the regular, twitch.tv slash work the space. In fact, at the time this video goes up, an hour after it's been live, I am going to be streaming on Twitch the start of Season 3. So if you want to check that out, the link is down in the description. Perhaps you want to go back and watch the previous seasons in full. They are available on the second channel, which I've already talked about. But again, go over there. Of course, these season recaps are a slightly different type of content to what I'm used to doing. So if there's anything that maybe you would have liked to have seen covered in this video that I haven't covered, let me know it down in the comments. Maybe I can implement that for the season three recap. Hopefully I see you guys over on Twitch or maybe at least for the season three review in a week or two's time. And until then, take care. Thank you for watching as always. It is me, Jack. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.